Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to Day 18, another edition of albums that are 50 years old in 2021. Today, we're going to take a look at uh, actually the second time that this particular band has made the count for me or has uh, made the list. Of course, you know how we're doing this. 28 days of February, I picked out my 28 favorite albums that turned 50 years old this year released in the glory year of 1971 and alongside those 28 favorites i got 28 honorable mentions right so 56 albums in general in total not in general in total that i'm talking about this month so uh getting back to today's pick so this particular album uh is the second release from this band in 1971 we talked about one of their other ones just a week or two ago, right? So this that was released early in the year in 71. This one came out November 8th, 1971. Recorded at Lansdowne Studios in London, England. Uh, produced by a guy named Jerry Braun. Perhaps you've heard of him. The album's released on Bronze Island Mercury. Of course, we're talking about Look at Yourself. Look at Yourself by Uriah Heep. Um, big fan of this album. I have long said that uh, I know a lot of people pick Demons and Wizards of the Magician's Birthday as their favorite Uriah Heep album, as the cream of the crop, uh, and I love both of those albums quite a bit. This album, to me, always kind of stood a little higher up, a little, little further up the mountain than those two, for a bunch of reasons. I mean, the title track, Look at Yourself, is so heavy. Just a great rocker. you got I Want to Be Free, another really strong track. You've got July Morning. That atmospheric, kind of proggy, kind of psychedelic, you know, number with some great keyboard tones from Mr. Hensley. Great vocals from David Byron. Stinging guitar solo from Mick Box. Then you've got the, the kind of boogie-ish tears in my eyes. Good up-tempo, fun party rocker, right? And then, of course, the unsung, unsung cut from this album and perhaps their catalog, Shadows of Grief. Oh, my God. So heavy. So doomy, so evil sounding. It's, it's literally one of the classic heavy songs from the early 70s that nobody ever talks about. And one of the many reasons why Uriah Heep are considered by so many people as, you know, one of the originators of what we would come to call heavy rock or eventually heavy metal, right? Because all the seeds were planted right around this time period with a lot of different bands. Uh, what else we got on here? You got uh, What Should Be Done, another terrific song, then Love Machine, the up-tempo rocker, Love Machine at the end of the album. Uh, just some great stuff on here, man. You know, get tears in my eye. You know, again, Ken Hensley, great songwriter. Also sang a little bit in the band as well. He had a great voice, if you listen to any of his solo stuff. Immense Hammond organ player and a really good slide guitar player. You can hear uh, all those talents in uh, you know, Tears in My Eyes, which is great. And if you get the, uh, the remaster, you get the bonus tracks taken from the se same sessions. What's Within My Heart, really good song. And The Wonderful Why, Why is terrific. Um, yeah, love this album a lot. A lot. Uh, my honorable mention, kind of, sort of, cut from the same cloth, especially early on. Uh, contemporaries of Uriah Heep, and uh, as you know, I am a sucker for hard rockin' bands with lots of guitar and lots of Hammond organ. So, of course, In Hearing Of by Atomic Rooster gets my honorable mention of the day. And yes, that is a uh, Roger Dean-inspired cover artwork there. All right. Mr. Dean, gotta love Mr. Dean, shows up on uh, all sorts of stuff, um, you know, during this time period. And uh, so this album is their third release. Not quite as, like, immense as Death Walks Behind You or the first album, which came before it, which are both absolutely essential listening if you haven't heard them. Uh, this album takes a little bit more of kind of like a bluesier tone, which they would investigate even further in subsequent albums. So here you've got the you know the classic lineup along with uh, a vocalist who would also kind of make his name in a couple other bands. You've got Vincent Crane on Have an Organ, all right. You've got um, John Duquesne on guitars, okay. You've got Paul Hammond on drums and percussion. All right, and then you've got uh, a guy, perhaps you've heard of him, named Pete French. Pete French, of course, uh, sang with the uh, wonderful early 70s heavy rock monsters Leaf Hound, and he also was briefly in Cactus as well. Really good singer, really good singer. I think he works really well on this album, uh, and then this lineup wouldn't last, of course. Vincent Crane would basically get rid of the whole band and bring a whole bunch of new folks in. Uh, 
including Chris Farlow from Coliseum, and the band would take on a drastically different sound going forward. But uh, I, I, for me, the first three Atomic Rooster albums are absolutely spot on. This is real. This is great. You got uh, Breakthrough, which is catchy, kind of heavy. Break the Ice is is awesome. You got Decision, Indecision. You got a spoonful of bromide. Helps the pulse rate go down. Got to love that song title. Uh, Black Snake, terrific song. Again, kind of really good blues rock with uh, simmering hang of having organ, tasty guitars. Head in the Sky, The Rock, and The Price. And then you've got uh, the single that they released right around this time period called Devil's Answer, which is also on the, uh, this is what, uh, Repertoire Records reissue. So really cool stuff. I always dug this album. All right. Good stuff. That is my honorable mention for today. But, of course, the main pick is none other than Look At Yourself. Oh, that Hammond organ from Hensley. Man, Ken Hensley and Mick Box were a absolute force to be reckoned with when they worked together during the 70s. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. So there you go. Look at yourself by your eye heap and hearing of by Atomic Rooster. My two picks today, the main one, the honorable mention. Curious to see what you guys come up with in the comments below. And uh, stay tuned for another episode tomorrow morning. All right. We're bringing this at you every day up until the 28th of February for the final one. And then we shift gears for March. In March, we're going to do a fun daily show about dream set lists. All right. So every day is going to be a different band pick. And every day we're going to together, because I'm going to do it and you're going to do it, we're going to come with come up with what would be our dream set list from this band. I think to add a cool twist to it would be like pick the lineup and I'm going to try and I'm going to try and go f- pick bands that were around for a long time or have been around for a long time and possibly even have had like some lineup shifts and maybe different singers over their their course of their careers, right? Make it a little bit interesting because maybe what you what we all can do is throw in it's like all right, so this band has been around for 45 years, right? They've had two distinct lineups which era would you like to see and what would be the dream set list from that era, right? You could do it that way, or if you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, but I think that would be a kind of an interesting way to do it. So, you know, pick like around what time period would you have liked to have seen them and what would you have liked that the, the set list to have been from that lineup, right? So some cool things we can do. I think it'll be pretty interesting and it'll be, it'll be kind of cool to see are folks going to go with like the most well-known songs or are folks going to pick like a little smattering of popular tunes and some really good deep cuts that the band didn't play live a lot? So uh, this is this is almost kind of like a twist on the deep cut dive show, except you know what would you love to see in a set list from some of these notable bands? So uh, and I, I had a couple folks asking, well, Pete, you going to let us know what all the bands are ahead of time so we can prepare? Nope, I don't even know what what they're going to be ahead of time. This is not going to be something where I'm going to map out the entire month. It's just going to be kind of random selection of bands we talk about on this channel. All right. Uh, so it's, you know, it could be metal bands, hard rock bands, classic rock bands, fusion bands, prog bands. I mean, it's going to be all across the, you know, the spectrum of what we cover. Could be bands that were big 40, 50 years ago. Could be some bands that have been, you know, very popular the last 20, 30 years. So it's going to be all over the place. So, uh, and if some instances you don't like the band that is picked, well, just follow along, watch, and and listen and uh, you know whatever I'm sure there'll be plenty of groups that uh, I'll be picking over the course of the how many days we got in March 31 30 something like that um, so yeah so I think that'll be kind of fun and then uh, you know as we move into April we'll come up with something new so uh, so stay tuned for all sorts of cool stuff a little programming update so we got tonight uh, Ryan Scow and myself Ryan from the Hudson Valley Squares and I are going to be giving you our 10 favorite albums from US metal sort of legends underground legends Manila Road that's happening tonight, as well as a live show, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tune in here live tonight for the Monsters Den. Rich Catino, Chris Allo, and myself will be giving you part two of our favorite Animals Attack films. That's coming up at 8 p.m. tonight, Eastern Standard Time, here in the U.S. Hope to catch you guys live in the chat room. So uh, we'll be uh, you know, talking about some films and taking some questions, you know, that sort of thing. So look for a good hour plus on that tonight. Then we got tomorrow morning. We have Martin Popoff and I getting back again for Friday morning at the Fun House. And uh, we got a pretty cool topic. How about those bands who had a huge album and then followed it up with somewhat of a turkey, right? 
So that's coming up tomorrow morning. Uh, we've got some things happening over the weekend and into next week. And uh, next week, I'm very excited. We've got the debut of our another new show on the channel called In the Prog Seat. That's going to be another kind of like panel show with a rotating list of guests each and every week. If we do it every week, it might be every other week. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we've got three gentlemen joining me next week that I'm very excited to have on the show. Um, a couple of them you've seen before and one you haven't. And I think uh, it's going to be a fun conversation about some of our favorite prog and prog metal concept albums okay so we're each going to be talking about a few of our favorites and uh, that's happening next week uh, as well as all sorts of other stuff so uh, stay tuned for this and a lot more also too wanted to mention because i haven't done it in a while uh if you we've got i know we have a lot of new people who've joined the channel in recent weeks or so uh, if we've got any comic book fans out there all right i do have a second channel which I don't talk enough about on here, but I know plenty of you go over there and check it out. But uh, Comic Book Geezers is my second YouTube channel. I've had that going on now for about oh, three and a half, going on four years, with my good buddy Wild Bill and my other good buddy Kirk. Uh, that is, uh, we, that's a twice a week show. New episodes every Wednesday and Friday. We talk about, I mean, as you can probably see up there, I got a lot of comic books, right? And as do my friends. And uh, what we do, it's all about the classics. So if you love Marvel, especially Marvel, but DC as well, comics from the 60s, 70s, and the 80s, we do some contemporary stuff, but not that often because we love the old stuff. Uh, we basically talk about and show off our comics, have all sorts of discussions. Formats are very similar that we have here on uh, SOT. Uh, we do lots of theme shows and uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So we, like I said, we have a couple hundred videos up on YouTube. We've been at it for a bunch of years, and uh, it's a really fun show. And uh, I would love for you guys, if you have any interest in comics at all, come join us over at Comic Book Geezers. Just search Comic Book Geezers and please subscribe. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers over there, so we would love uh, that jump past the 2,000 mark. So uh, hope to see you guys there, as well as here on the channel uh, in the coming days and weeks. So stay tuned, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatanquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Take care, everybody. We'll see you tonight. Lots of good stuff happening tonight. See you then. Bye-bye.